this with the same approach in that mm -hmm. you're chopping you off that note before you're on it. You can't miss a note if you're on it. What I want you to do is go on to the note and stay there for a second. You're still not making it important. By ch in other words, you're giving it the same timing of those fast notes. If it's important, you can't give it the same timing. Stay there. Ta, 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 ta. Hi, that is. Ta, ta, ta. The, whole, the whole interpretation changed. You're going to ta, 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 to it once she knew she had a hold. Then she said, there can be no accuracy that way. That was beautiful. Pretend you're a bell. Right, let me see you do that again. Beautiful. Now stay there. Stay there. Tom. 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 Makes such a difference. Right, now you'll never miss it. Now, all right, and of course I feel that teaching is also knowing to how to tell the pianist exactly how to do what you want him to do. I think the most frustrating thing in the world is have a young artist come in and to tell him what you want and his hands can't do it. It is the teacher's job to find a way to get the student to do it. We're talking about dedicated, earnest, and gifted people. There's no reason why any of them should not be able to do exactly what they want to do. What I was looking for was somebody who would help me do what I wanted to do. I play a lot of contemporary music and there are uh, sometimes extreme and strange things that one has to learn how to do. She has such a grasp on movement and piano playing that it was really ideal information for somebody in my situation. Uh, I do a lot of freelance work and that means learning a lot of pieces very quickly under a lot of pressure and you don't have time to make a lot of mistakes. It really helps if you know, okay, I have this problem, this is the kind of solution you look for. It saves a lot of time and when you have two weeks or one week or three weeks to learn a piece, you can't always sit around and just uh, keep, keep knocking at it until it, it gives. I come sometimes even to fairly strange problems. If I can reduce them to some basic movement ideas that I've learned from Dorothy, it makes my ability to learn them uh, just uh, a fraction of the amount of time it might have taken before when you're just kind of working from instinct. The principles of using the fingers are applicable to every instrument. The basic physiological laws are the same for your hand no matter what you do. It's the same in a sport. If you play tennis or golf, the same principles are there. The physiological principles and the physical laws are there, the mechanical laws are there. Not different. It'd be a question of intelligently applying it to the particular instrument. My senior year of college, I was doing a concert with a group, and in the middle of the concert, my third and fourth fingers totally locked, and I never did finish the concert. I could not move them up or down. There was just a total numbing as well as no way to move them unless I took my left hand and physically moved the fingers. It took 
several hours of massaging and then soaking it before the fingers would move on their own. But the pain lingered. It, it lingered all the way through my arm. She called me from Eastern Michigan. She's a teacher of the flute there. And Professor Joseph Gerd is my student there of piano, and she was also studying piano with him. And he called me and said, you must do something for this young girl. Her right hand is practically paralyzed. She's completely numb, and she has severe pain. And she went to an orthopedist who wanted to break every bone in her hand and reset it. Since there was no guarantee if the bones would heal correctly and I'd be able to play at all after they took the cast off, I opted not to do that. And again, as with all the other doctors, he suggested that I find a new profession and start over. By this time, I had already finished my bachelor's degree. I was starting a master's degree, and that was the last thing I wanted to hear, was to start all over and find something else. Dorothy was a little reluctant. She said she had never worked with the flutist before and couldn't promise me anything. We worked jointly between the piano and the flute to see how the two instruments were similar to each other in their technique. Basically what the problem was on flute was that I was lifting my fingers off the keys, playing with a, a high finger action on the flute. She did the very thing that, they, that Schumann did. She pulled as she held down the other keys, she pulled each finger away when she let go. All she had to do was ride up with the key up to, when the, up to the surface of the key as it let go. There was no need to pull her fingers all the way up. She was pulling and stretching her fingers. Secondly, to do the sharps, you have to go sideways to the stop on the side there. So she was doing pulling her fingers and pulling sideways. She had no rotation. So I gave her a lesson on how to rotate over to the sharp and the flat. At the same, and not to allow the fingers to pull up, just to let the keys to come up. And there, she's very bright. She had it in two minutes. We spent an hour and a half just going over to make sure she understood, and that was the end of it. Yeah, I've been playing concerts, but for a while I stopped because I wanted really to take a good look at what I was doing. I never really was conscious about my movements, you know, my hand movements. Of course, uh, when you talk about technique, you talk about music. Every movement has all reason for it, you see. It's not just to be comfortable, but to, to do justice to the music, you know. When I was at Juilliard, that was the reason that when I heard about Mrs. Tau, when I saw, gee, technique, you know, that's, you know, that's just for the working man, working person, you know, that was something, you know, the elite did not think about technique. The two, technique and music, are so interrelated that I, there is no way to separate the two. First of all, if you cannot move properly, you cannot make music. If you cannot play evenly, if you play Mozart or Haydn and the runs are not even, there is no way to me, the music stops right there. But anything that you try, for example, when you talk about shaping, you see that when you shape a phrase in a certain way, the music come out in a certain way. Okay, your, your, your hand is rigid. You don't have a shape to help you. I want you to do this. Go down, da, 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 da. 
Go down. Not that low, but you'll collapse your wrist, then you'll have another problem. You'll get a pain in your back. <laughs> you can't collapse your wrist when I, as if. I did the reading to see what research was in our field. And there were some important books. There's Ortman's book, The Physiological Mechanics of Piano Technique, where he did a lot of testing, mechanical testing in a dark room with lights on the hands of pianists, measuring motion, etc. Uh, he came up with some interesting basic concepts. I'll give you an example. He said that when you have movement in opposite direction, for example, uh, if you have alternating actions, if you're going up and down very quickly, you must get tired. Because the muscle that lifts your arm, which is an extensor, cannot relax quickly enough for the muscle that has to drop your arm to bring you down. They come in conflict and create tension. That's true. It's important to know that. But he came to the conclusion that therefore when you play octaves, there's no way that you can get rid of fatigue. You've got to slow down. Now what's incredible to me, the man goes to concert, Horowitz doesn't slow down. Which of the great artists slow down? They take a Mephisto waltz and octaves and they go faster and faster and faster. So he has to hear that what he's saying is not so. If you get so tight, the pain would be so incredible. But nobody could do it. What he didn't realize is that if that principle is true, which it is, physiologically it's true, then artists must be playing octaves in a way totally unrelated to those movements. There are other movements. For example, one can get, one can get off the key by lifting the arm, but one can allow gravity to drop it down. You don't have to use your muscle. Your arm can fall. If it's falling without any muscular activity, then you no longer have an antagonistic movement in opposite directions. You have only an active movement in one direction. I want to ask something. What do you feel when you play it fast? What makes it hard? Are you tight? Mm -hmm. uh -huh. I thought that's why I wanted to try it. Right, let me show you something, dear. I just want you to lean on me for one moment. Let all your weight go, sweetheart. Just don't do anything. Lean on me as if it was a dead arm, OK? Yeah, now I see. What you have to do is when you play your chords, you're, using, you're doing this, do this, do this. Now, let me move it. Mm -hmm. Just do nothing. Mm -hmm. Do you feel what that feels like? No, you're moving it. Don't do anything. Keep it dead. Let me move it. Let it just fall. You see what that feels like? There's no muscle working at all. What you have to do, I saw the tension. I realized that you were limited in speed. And there should be no limit to your speed in this thing. That if you allow it just to fall by itself, if you allow gravity, just let it fall by itself. Instead of doing this, you'll get tremendous speed. Do you want to try it for a moment, see if you can catch that? You might catch it right away. Let it go by itself. By itself. Just let it, let it bounce. Let it snap bounce by itself. I went in, and I was in one of my black moods. And she said, what's bothering you this week? And I said, well, there are these big pieces I can't play. You know, I could never play something like the Six Hungarian Rhapsody. So she said, nonsense. Here's the music. I'll teach you to play it right now. <laughs> so she said, play some octaves. So I played some octaves. And she said, no, you got it all wrong. It's, it's totally the wrong idea. You know? So what you have to understand is that it works this way, right? So try that. So I tried that. It doesn't work. So he says, well, turn your hand a little bit this way. Try this. You know? Keep doing this. All of a sudden, my